this uh this bag going on here what's what's the deal there if i'm being completely <laughs> transparent with you that's the graveyard the graveyard yeah if you open this thing up right here i uh Hey, welcome back to Stupid Coffee. Last episode, you saw me interview Joe Abaca, a figurative artist here in New York City. This episode, we're going to his studio to check it out. I must warn you, this is my first time doing a studio tour, and to be honest, I didn't really think that I was gonna have to capture any audio, so I didn't bring my audio gear with me. But luckily, the camera has a built-in microphone. So I tried to salvage what I could. With the help of AI, I got to salvage some of the audio, but I just wanted you to know since there might be some in and out of audio and some really quiet moments. Also, on another note, could you do me a favor and hit that like button? That would help a lot getting this video on to more people, which alternatively will help out other artists out there. All right, I'll wait. Last but not least, I've been interviewing a lot of different artists and I was wondering maybe there's a type of artist that you would like me to interview. If you could do me a favor and also write down in the comment section what kind of artist you would like to see next or even want me to interview more of. Could be more painters, more actors, whatever it is. Just put it in the comment. Alright, let's get on with the show. Hey, hey. All right. Yeah, this is a nice spot. Oh, thank you. Welcome. This is um downtown Brooklyn. Sit. Yeah, it's Dumbo. Right up to Dumbo. This is you uh, mixing just to get a certain color. Yeah, I usually prep all of the pigments ahead of time work as hard as I can to kind of achieve that, that color that exists in my mind. What, what color uh, are you trying to achieve right now? Uh, the new work is kind of centered around um, a bit of a, a darker palette with uh, tinted tones in it. So a lot of like light colored greens and browns. I mix up enough to where I can work pretty on pretty large area. Um, that's pretty dope. Yeah. This is super dope. So this is like almost done? No, this is, um, I would say roughly about 40% of the way up. That's really cool. This is unseen artwork here. <laughs> Early stages. Early stages. So I thought that was like, basically like done already. Uh, Every single painting kind of starts with an idea. And as I move through some of the newer work, I try to embed those ideas much deeper and much earlier. And even if the final product doesn't resemble them, I still want them to be part of the painting itself. Fair. And you were saying like, all of the paintings kind of uh, start off as like a, a flower? Yeah. Or a floral? Um, all of the new works start as a floral arrangement. I want them to sort of have the essence of that uh, kind of steeped deep inside the painting. So every painting starts as a floral arrangement. That's dope. And then I start adding more elements on top of it. Sometimes the, the floral arrangements really disappear, but that's part of the thing. Not all the dreams I have come at night. Sometimes they come in the middle of the afternoon of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> this, I, uh, I had wanted to be in this building for a little over two years and I had another studio in bed -Stuy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you were uh, over there instead. Yeah. I was in bed for two and a half or three years. This, uh, this bag going on here, what's, what's the deal there? Well, uh, is that your paint bag? If I'm here? being, if, if I'm being you're like completely <laughs> transparent with you, that's the graveyard. The graveyard? Yeah, if you open this thing up right here. I uh, save all of the tubes once I'm finished. Oh, cool. Using them for every collection. So um, 
every time I use a tube of paint and I finish it, I place it in this bag. And at the end of every collection, I adhere all of the tubes to a canvas. And then that becomes one of the works. Oh, that's so dope. It's all the materials it took to make the work. Got this somewhere or you found them or? No, no, actually, uh, uh, it's, it's this is like 10 grand or something. Is that what you're no, trying no, to say? No. <laughs> this is something I used in the past, but the reason why it's in the studio is, is I actually kind of approach my practice that way. Oh, okay. Like it takes a certain level of uh, courage and endurance. And sometimes grappling with the paintings feels a lot like going 12 rounds with your own ideas. Kind of in this war of attrition to, to get some sort of victory. And I kind of think that sometimes to achieve something great, it's almost like a fight. Nice. Sometimes they come very naturally, but sometimes you have to uh, show up and fight hard to get that, that win in the studio. Fair. Love that. Yeah. From a past gallery? Yeah, that's a flyer, a, a, a gallery uh, poster from a show I had in Miami. playing a little bit light like you're bending some of like realism in here yeah like a little bit realistic but you see still see all the individual strokes yeah versus trying to sort of overly perfect things and remove your own hand from the work really hard shapes but i don't want them to i don't want them to be so perfect that it doesn't feel like you can see all the individual marks, you know, all the strokes. Yeah. I want there to be a lot of imperfections in there. So it feels like a painting. Really like um, texture too in like art. Whenever I go see the paintings, like whenever I see like molds of like thickness going on and the, the, the paint going on yeah. in there and just like the strokes, like I really gravitated to looking at those more texture wise, just so fulfilling for some reason. Couldn't agree more. And I, I think it maybe has to do with like, I don't know if this is, you know, because we went to art school and know and like watch like people do millions of same realistic photos, you know what I mean? Like same thing over and over. You're like, okay, cool. I've seen I've seen people draw realistically the same thing, like a photograph. And you're like, everybody tends to do the same thing. And now you're just looking for more nuances. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel that it has something to do with, with that. So the, re, I, the way I kind of describe it is a little bit like we've all seen a photograph of fruit or flowers. We don't need another one. We need your version of fruit. We need your version of uh, flowers, you know? Yeah. The world needs like a very unique version of what you have to offer. That's cool. Now, this is like the next step, and then I'll let this dry, and then I'll go over. Make this 
are something that like people can see and enjoy, you know. This entire series was an effort to go out and take photographs and then to collage them together and then to blow them up really large, cut them out and apply them to the canvas. And they're almost like a division between the two of them. The bottom section of these are all photographed collaged image and then the top is all paint. Nice. And just like this camera is like from the 70s, you're saying? Uh, yeah, this so, uh, was a medium format 120 camera that was made in Japan in the mid 70s. And, and then I have all of these were done the same. So. Oh, nice. So this, this series is actually finished. Oh, cool. Yeah. This is, so, the this is the next gallery you're saying? Yeah, so these are all these will all be shown um, in New York. Oh dope. Is it New York? Yeah, in New York. So um, I finished all these. And then you gotta see the ones behind which are pretty cool. It's my favorite one that I've uh, of the whole series. This is already sold already? Yeah, that one's already sold. This is dope. Yeah, kind of a uh, sort of an oscillation between collage and paint. So all the lower halves are all painted, and then the top halves are all collage. Love it. Let's see that for a second. About these paintings, and I thought. Uh, in the dream, they felt like they were falling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I started looking at images or photographs of people falling and started thinking like, there's like a unsettling feeling, like almost like a, a terrified element when someone's falling. Yeah. If, if there's fear involved, right? And then as I started to kind of unpack what, what the figures should look like, I started realizing they're a little bit more like suspended in air. Yeah. Because suspension can be like a really peaceful thing. I feel like that's kind of where a lot of people are in the culture right now. Coming out of this strange couple of years, sort of suspended. Not really having a good grasp on time or, or eh, what direction their life is going in. So suspension felt like an appropriate talking kind of that thing too. Yeah, it definitely feels. Um, I, I just such these these um, paintings are so alive in a way. I feel the that makes sense of that whole like grass of like, kind of just going into the unknown almost. Yeah, yeah. Sort of that up or down. Uh, kind of back to the conversation we we're having about texture. I and mean, all these are dry, so it's like, you know, the, all of these have this really beautiful, heavy texture on everything. Old napkins. And then what you do is somebody draws the head and the shoulders. Uh -huh. Somebody draws the arms and the torso. And then somebody draws the legs. They're all on separate folds, and then you unfold it and see what three <laughs> different uh, illustrations. How how much harmony is involved or how kind of disconnected they feel. And yeah. so like the bottom sections, I would put these collages on and then I would kind of draw these other figures on to sort of not really line up. And look, there he is. Oh, no yeah. face. Yeah, no face. I actually planned for him to have no face. But one day when I was at the studio, I just came in, history of the work. Yeah. So it's like, I eventually made it part of the painting. Does this guy have a name? But I like him. <laughs> Maybe like two months ago, but 
uh, the original sort of concept of the painting uh, was born out of um, a series of works done by an artist named Ellsworth Kelly in the mid 50s where he would find these postcards and he would uh, essentially collage them. Oh. And I found this postcard um, in a stack of old photos that my dad gave me. And oh, so wow. it was a postcard that my dad sent in the 70s or was sent to him in the 70s and from my hometown in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I blew it up really big and collaged it and it somehow fought its way into this band. <laughs> Love that. There was, there was kind of a tapestry of different things that were woven together that made me, I think, have kind of the likes and dislikes I have now. Mm -hmm. If you look at this, you know, being from New Mexico, this is traditional Catholic image. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the first pieces of art I really loved were religious based. Mm -hmm. Right here you can see David Lynch smoking uh, cigarettes and watched a lot of those films when I was young. This figure right here is from a Fritz Schulter painting. Um, I grew up, my dad is uh, Native American and I grew up looking at a lot of Fritz Schulter's paintings. Um, images of horses sort of seem to be a reoccurring theme. Yeah, I love this that. This is uh, New York in the 90s. Oh, wow. A lot of like urban and graffiti images, you know, mm -hmm. sort of um, lodged in these words. This, these figures in the back sort of, a lot of all this childhood stuff slipping away, kind of falling away. Oh, this is deep, huh? Yeah. I learned so much in this painting. Mm -hmm. It's small, but as you can see, this is all collaged. That's oh, like, yeah. I took a, 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 a an expression on a face, placed it in a vintage television, and sort of like uh, created this figure um, and just sort of commingled like paint and collage together. But this is, this is definitely the fall of kind of like cultural awareness through entertainment. Yeah, very cool. But I learned a lot of uh, things that I would maybe use later in this little small painting. It's always a process, uh, a new thing is exciting. And every time you come back to it, you have like a new style and jab to it. Yeah, I feel lucky that I'm able to chase down all these really absurd ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I feel like yeah. very lucky to see this. Your art here. You're singing, like this, uh, this, all these stuff are. This kind of this part of the studio represents all of the experimenting I did to like make these other um, paintings. They weren't necessarily they weren't necessarily failures, but they also weren't successes either. Okay. They were. Um, they were ideas. Eh? Yeah, they were. They were a place to sketch larger, you know, sketch out ideas that weren't fully formed yet, that mm -hmm. may have potentially found themselves in the paintings later. Yeah. But uh, I ended up editing them out. Fair. A lot of the, like the forgotten heroes that helped me get to a much funner stage. Yeah. I mean, this still. Is actually me. Oh, what? Taylor took this photograph. That's my head, my hand. Oh, I see it now. I yeah, see it. Yeah, that's my head. My hand. I posed for this photo. We took the photo, and then I superimposed an old Marlboro ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> and then I painted the leg. Yeah, yeah. The thing that is interesting about this painting, I don't, I don't plan on showing this painting, but um, I do really think that's the better of all the floaters I painted. <laughs> that's like my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, de Kooning, Willem de Kooning, he was very much with me when I was making all these paintings. I was thinking and meditating a lot on his work and Sonic Youth, I listened to a lot. Yeah. I listened to a lot of Sonic Youth. Kim Gordon. Yeah. Hell yeah. Love that. Yeah. This is a Guy Bourdain photograph mm -hmm. from the late 70s. 
wanted to channel that 70s yeah. vibe. Love. You can see that I kind of superimposed these old cigarette ads. Yeah, I saw that straight. Marlboro, cool. Lucky Strike. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so two um, very, very uh, strong um, predators. And then this painting doesn't have anything to do with the new work. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's just there, you just needed to make it. Yeah, it's just the painting that was an idea that um, sometimes you just have to, you have to exercise an idea um, whether or not you're going to use it just so that it becomes something real and not just an idea. It's cool, man. Yeah. Thanks for showing the, even the ones that you feel like not worthy of like the public eye. I feel like it's good for uh, a lot of new painters out there who are uh, kind of want to getting their feet wet or you know, feel insecure about what they need to do and always need to be perfect all the time. The only way to uh, find something that doesn't exist is to make a lot of things that uh, can exist. I'm doing a lot on this one. Yeah, this, this texture is, is Try straight out of gears. As we do. Yeah, it looks like it's like falling into a uh, like water, like a, like a, um, like there's like water going down. I mean, the texture to me, it feels like that. Oh, I think you're really, I think you're right about it. You're existing, I know. I have to decide whether or not I'm going to right into the face, which is dessert, you know? Yeah. So I try not to like jump the gun on it. I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Save it for last, you know, because it's so satisfying. Yeah, yeah, fair. You know? I mean, I, I really like it, man. It's like really cool stuff. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, even if you say it's like smaller, but like, All right, Joel. Thank you so much for uh, showing me the uh, art studio that you have here. It's pretty awesome. If you want to find out more about you, where can we find you? Well, you can uh, find me at Joel, J-O-E-L, Baca, B-A-C-A dot com for all my current work. Uh, or you can follow me on Instagram uh, at Joel Baca underscore. Sweet. And uh, for those of you too, like we'll have like all of his note stuff on the description as well. Well, thanks again for uh, joining Stupid Coffee. And um, yeah, thanks again, man. Pleasure was all mine. Thanks so much, man. I'll see you around. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.